So a very good afternoon to everyone present here. I am Sinchana from Cambridge Institute of Technology and from CSE department. Here I am here to present my project that is Vegetable Crisis Analysis. So we all have vegetables in our daily life, right? Almost everyone has it. Uh, even though you are a vegetarian or a non-vegetarian, everyone does have it. But what if the prices are too inflated? Then can we all purchase the vegetables? No, right? So let us do an analysis of the data which I have imported from the Kaggle data set. So in the beginning I have just uh, got my current working directory with the C users and admin. Then I have installed Kaggle here and I have downloaded the data sets. Here in the information, here you can see the columns that is price dates and uh, bindi means ladies finger, tomato, onion, potato, brinjal, garlic, peas, methi, green chili and elephant yam. Uh, that is called a surin. Here you can see that there are 287 records indexed from 0 to 286 which is normal. Hence you need not uh, substitute any null values for that. Next, I have uh, type df.head which is used to uh, get the first five records from the data set. So the 0 to 4 records have been uh, displayed here. The tail is used to display the last five records. That is 282 to 283, 286. I have dropped the price dates. Since it will be difficult, uh, whenever we are doing the correlation, it will be very difficult uh, if we have the price dates. Hence, I have dropped that column. Then, I have found out the minimum, uh, the maximum and uh, the median standard deviation and the variance for the data set that I have imported. Here you can see for example tomatoes minimum is 16 and uh, onions minimum is 8. At the same time the maximum is uh, for tomato it is 80, for onion it is 57 and the same goes with mean, median and standard deviation. Next in order to analyze the data, graphs are really important. Uh, whenever we have, uh, whenever uh, we are provided with the uh, complete data, it will be very difficult for us to analyze the read the data and all the other stuff. But if we have graph, it will be very easy for us to analyze. So that's the reason I have imported C bond as SNS. Here I have used uh, at once I have uh, I did the graph for every vegetables and here you can see. You will not understand any data here. Just observe. Next, I did separately the disk plot, which is uh, used to graph uh, plot a graph for single numeric uh, variables. And here you can observe. Since the uh, maximum of tomato has been sold for sixteen rupees, you can see there is a single graph here. Next, I did the same thing for potato, and here you can see the maximum is at twenty. Even you can observe in the mean, the maximum will be 20. Next, I did the same thing for onion, brinjal, garlic and other vegetables. The next thing I have done is pair plot. Pair plot is used to compare two numeric variables. So for instance, I have given here potato. The potato has been, I will just display the image here. So that it will be very easy to understand. For instance, I am comparing potato with the onion. Here you can see. Okay. So I am here comparing potato with the onion. And here you can see as the prices of the potato increases in this way, the onion prices also increases. So this is one of the example of pair plot. Next we have hist plot. Here we can see, next we have hist plot. Here we can see the y axis is count and the x axis is potato. X axis is potato. So here uh, just observe at the 20 rupees. The maximum potatoes have been sold for 20 rupees. That is above 80. Above 80 potatoes have been sold for 20 rupees. The same thing goes with tomato. As I told earlier, uh, 
more uh, 60 uh, more than 280 250 records has been uh, displayed here the same thing goes with other vegetables also next i have shown here the scatter plot here also again the same tomato here you can see 16 rupees is uh, for all the vegetable potato prices 16 rupees is the common since that is the common price next we have potato and methi scatter plot for potato and brinjal here also we can see as the uh, prices of potato increases the prices of brinjal also increases this is box plot box plot is used where this is used to represent the maximum price wherever this part is there and uh, wherever the box representation is there that is used to present the average the same thing goes with other vegetables as well and this is violin plot next we have done the cross tab for uh, two different vegetables so first i did the heat map for different costs of the vegetables i hope no one understands here because there are so many records and each records has been represented with different color hence we will go with the correlation and then represent that correlation with the heat map so let's see so here i have represented the correlation so you can see there are different correlations like 1, 0 0.04, 0 0.14 etc. There are negative values as well. What does this represent? 1 represents there is no difference. Of course when you compare a lady's finger with the lady's finger that is with the same vegetables you will get 1. In, instead if it is negative it means whenever the cost for example I will just take okay bindi and potato here it is minus 0 0.14. What does it mean? Whenever the prices of the bindi increases, the prices of the potato decreases. What if it is positive? It means both also increases simultaneously. It is directly proportional. So next we have the heat map. From heat map we are easily able to analyze with the colors, the differences. Next, uh, in order to do the statistical test, I have imported uh, SCI PY, the module, then I have done the T square. These are some of the outputs. Next. Actually I wanted to sort the prices. But how can we sort from the data set? So what I did was, I just converted the data set into list. So here you can see, uh, first Bindi I have converted into list. And then I, I did bubble sort on that list. So these are some of the prices. But please observe that there are so many redundant data. Hence what will we do? We will make use of set which will reduce the redundant data. Means for example if we have 96 uh, uh, 20s only, we will reduce to 120s. The count will be reduced. So next we have, I performed linear search on that. Then uh, here I have converted into set. Next I did the pie chart. So pie chart, from this pie chart you can easily analyze that which vegetable has the highest cost. Can uh, anyone tell me which okay, which color has the highest uh, uh, possible rate? Okay, uh, which one? Okay, that is brown actually. Uh, so the brown color, what is that? It is garlic. So garlic has the highest rate. So even in our daily life also it's common, right? Uh, garlic will be having the highest rate. Other vegetables will be at most normal. That's because we won't use garlic that much. We'll just use some amount of garlic. So this was about my data set. But the question is, where can we use this data set? Uh, according to me, this data set can be used to analyze the data for future purpose. I mean, it can be used for prediction. Uh, for example, we can use AI in order to predict the future data. This is for 286 days. For the next 286 days, you can use this data in order to you know, predict what might be the prices. Next, we can have uh, we can uh, uh, send this to farmers also so that they can know the rates of the actual rates that has been sold in the market. We can take the, uh, do the same thing for the farmers data. That is, um, what, at what rates the farmers will be uh, selling to the middlemen. This is actually the prices of what middlemen will be selling to the consumers. Now this both data we can compare and we can understand whether uh, uh, the fair thing is being done to farmers or not. So these are some of the uh, things that, has be, uh, that can be done with my data. So that's all. I thank uh, everyone for uh, patiently listening to my uh, presentation.